Knowing the difference between arguments and parameters can actually be pretty important when communicating about our code. But before we begin, just a quick note that here at Thinkster, our new course, The Fundamentals of Angular, is out and launched, and it is completely free. That's right, 100% free, nothing behind a paywall. So go check it out, click the link down below to get our free, complete introduction to The Fundamentals of Angular, over 13 hours long, over 41 hands-on exercises to really learn Angular. I recently ran a quick little Twitter poll to see if people in general knew the difference between parameters and arguments. And the results were pretty interesting. Here's the results of that poll, and you can see that only about half of people were really confident with what the difference between an argument and a parameter was. One-fifth of all people didn't know at all, and about a third weren't 100% sure about arguments and parameters. So it's a good thing to kind of go over and also to see why we want to understand the difference and understand what the rest parameter is and how that works. So let's look at a little bit of code here. I'm going to create a function called purchase and give it two parameters, item name and quantity. So this purchase function, it's got two parameters. The parameters are the names of the things that were passed in. So we've got two names here, item name and quantity. Arguments are the values that lie underneath that. So if I invoke this function, I'm invoking it with two arguments, the string hand sanitizer and the quantity 300. And if we log that out, we can see what the arguments are, the word hand sanitizer, the string hand sanitizer, and the number 300. Those are the arguments. Parameters are the names, arguments are the values. This also clues us in as to why the arguments object is named the way it is. In JavaScript, we have an arguments object, and this object contains all of the arguments given to the function. So if we were to log this out, we can see the two arguments were passed in. It's called arguments because it's not parameters. The arguments really has no connection to the name. The first argument passed in is the string hand sanitizer. The second argument passed in is the number 300. That's why it's named arguments, not named parameters. If it were named parameters, it would probably have string representations of the names, but not actually contain the values. Now, why do we even have this arguments object when we can just name our parameters anyway? There's not really that much use to calling arguments zero, right? We can get the same thing by doing arguments zero and arguments one here. And we get the same result of the console.log statement that we see down here on the right, but it's a lot more unwieldy to use this. Well, the arguments object allows us to do things that would be difficult or really impossible otherwise, and that is to pass in some unknown number of arguments into a function. So for example, if we instead of our purchase function had an add everything, so let's spell that correctly, add everything up function, and that function was to take in just a list of numbers and add them all up, but we didn't want to supply those as an array. We wanted to just supply those as separate arguments. For example, like so, then we can use the arguments object to actually accomplish this. And with that, we get out the value 59 down here in our console. So this will add up any number of arguments passed in to this function. So it gives us some flexibility, a lot of flexibility in JavaScript here that you don't find in a lot of other languages. But it is, again, a little bit unwieldy. For example, this would be a lot easier to do with a reduce call, but the arguments object is actually an array-like object. It's not actually a, an array. It's just an object that has a length property and can be iterated over, but it's not actually an array. And it also doesn't necessarily work well with things like TypeScript, as you can see, because TypeScript is giving us this error down on line nine saying, I don't know about these arguments. So JavaScript has come to the rescue and given us a rest parameter. What is a rest parameter? Well, it's a parameter that is identified with three dots before it and indicates that it's just going to gather up all of the parameters that don't already have names. By the way, this must be the last parameter. So in our case, we can do dot, dot, dot values. 
And now we can do the same thing that we did with the arguments object, but we can do this much simpler because this is a true array. This values parameter is going to be an array. So the argument is an array. And that needs to be console log. And we can see that we're now getting that same value 59, but much more concise because this is an array. It also allows us to use named parameters as well. So for example, we could pass in a log message and then a list of values. And we can still have our named parameters for things that we want to have specific names. And we can have the rest parameter for all of the rest of the arguments that are passed in. So that's the rest parameter, and that's the difference between parameters and arguments. And I hope you learned something from this video. If you think you've got this figured out, down below I've got a link to a challenge on StackBlitz. See if you can go in and solve the challenge. We like to have people do hands-on exercises like this, because this is how you actually learn. And if you're interested in more of this, go check out our courses over at thinkster.io.